2023 marked 250 years since an act that cemented Boston in America's origin story. Over the side. On a mild December night, reenactors flung tea into Boston Harbor, channeling the colonists who had protested taxation without representation back in 1773. But all these years later, there are still things left to discover about one of the most studied events in history. It only becomes super important to Americans in the 19th century. In fact, it doesn't even get called the Boston Tea Party until the 19th century. Now the Massachusetts Historical Society is looking closely at that protest from different perspectives. President Catherine Algor. For many of the people in Boston, the Boston Tea Party was just um, something peripheral to their lives. The six people we've chosen had all kinds of different relationships to the Tea Party. Among them, key players including iconic revolutionary Paul Revere and royal governor Thomas Hutchinson, but also Boston residents with other concerns. One of them is the young black poet Phyllis Wheatley. One of the tea ships, the Dartmouth, was carrying copies of her poems that had just been published in England. So her concern is getting her published poems off the ship. The Society's chief historian, Peter Drummy, says Wheatley's books weren't harmed. In fact, any cargo that wasn't tea had already been unloaded before the protest. The next day, people described Boston Harbor looking like a field that where hay had been cut on a field because there was so much dry tea floating on the harbor that it was covering it. People living in Dorchester scooped it up along the shore. 250 years later, some of that tea actually survives. The Massachusetts Historical Society has a small bottle of it, donated by one of its earliest members, Thaddeus Mason Harris, back in 1842. People will ask me, well, how do you know that this is authentically this tea? He was the librarian of the Massachusetts Historical Society, and I feel as the librarian of the Massachusetts Historical Society, descending from his role, that we would not do anything other than call something what it was and verify its authenticity. Drummy and Algor hope this range of perspectives on a well-known event will teach visitors about the world we live in now. We believe here at the Historical Society and, and in the historical profession that if you can really reach in and start to understand these people, you build what we call historical empathy. And then to bring that skill into the present and maybe understand the people around you as not so different after all. Just about a mile away from the Massachusetts Historical Society in the Fenway, visitors to Boston's public garden can find another slice of city history hidden at the corners of Arlington and Beacon Streets. Of all the places in the garden, this is sort of a tucked away area, but when you come to it, what you discover is this amazing memorial. This striking bronze angel is the work of three men who left their mark on Boston and the country. It's named for the person who funded it, philanthropist George Robert White. He made his fortune in the pharmaceuticals business, and when he died in 1922, he left $5 million to the city to set up a fund to support works of beauty and utility for the city. So he instructed people to set aside $50,000 to create a monument to himself. <laughs> so that's probably unique in that way too. A duo of heavy hitters was commissioned to create the monument. Fresh off their work creating the Lincoln Memorial, sculptor Daniel Chester French and architect Henry Bacon came to work in this corner of the public garden. There's a biblical passage on the monument that says, cast thy bread upon the waters for thou shalt find it after many days. And it represents that generosity of giving. As president of the Friends of the Public Garden, Liz Visa and her team care for three of Boston's public parks, the Common, the Public Garden, and the Commonwealth Avenue Mall, and their 42 pieces of public art. In 2016, the Friends led a project to restore the White Memorial and get the fountain running again in warm weather. 
we spent a lot of time underground making this, this the guts of it all work. Visa says the story behind this memorial speaks to an essential aspect of the community. What the Friends believes in to our core is that these places need to be brought to the next generation better than we found it. And somebody like White exemplifies that. And back to the Massachusetts Historical Society, one of the other voices in the Tea Party exhibit is Prince Hall. He was a middle-aged black man who was enslaved when he was young, but had been emancipated by the time of the protest. While some Bostonians were fighting for freedom in the relationship between the colonies and England, Hall was involved in the effort to argue for the end of slavery. Up next, unraveling a home's past.